Hello everybody, welcome to another episode, and today we're going to be talking about the kinds of low-grade sexual harassment unique to men. I'm pretty sure that, you know, it doesn't really matter if you're female or a male, you're going to experience sexual harassment, and females are more likely to experience it, but in general, I mean, I know plenty of people who were, had issues with other people doing stuff to them that shouldn't have happened, who were males. So, let's see. This was originally by Chutimalachotrod? These usernames are such a bitch to read, holy shit. Anyway, let's get to it. All right. First reply is by Blue Agave. This. I used to work for a catering company. We would often do catering in people's homes for events, weddings, big birthdays, and whatnot. And when I was in charge, I would often be the last person on shift packing up. Multiple times, if the event was for an older woman, they would become extremely creepy and pushy after everyone left, touching me, grabbing my arms, asking me if I wanted to stay the night, or telling me how cute I am. One even said, it's okay, she won't tell anyone. When I told my boss, who was a woman, I got told that I could, should consider it as a compliment and that I should ask for a bigger tip next time. It's best not to think only certain types of people, such as men, can overpower and physically or sexually assault you, because literally anyone can with enough wit, preparation, or just sheer luck. And Saad's law is that the person you least expect to be capable of attacking you is exactly the person who does end up attacking you. If any case exemplifies this, then it is the case of Reynard Sininga in the UK. He was an effeminate, gay, 5 foot 7 Indonesian guy who was studying at the University of Manchester and has, was convicted of being Britain's most serial or worst serial rapist, believed to have raped or assaulted over 206 people between 200, or 2015 and 2017. His victims were exclusively young men many much more physically powerful than him. He used intoxicants such as alcohol and GBH to drug and overpower his victims instead before raping and filming them, hence how police knew his exact victim count, as they were unconscious. He was only caught because his last victim, an 18-year-old six-foot-plus rugby player, woke up during the rape and beat him half to death leading to the hospitalization of Reynard and the arrest of the victim for serious assault, until the police realized what went on. Mother Holly adds, A nurse did this to me once I, when I went to the hospital. I was sitting in the room, and she came back four or five times to do things in the room. She wasn't even the nurse who came to see me first. Then she said I looked like I'd be in a band and asked if I was. And I said, yeah, previously. At the time, my Facebook header was of me when I was in band years prior, but I didn't make the connection because I didn't think of someone looking me up from my patient's name. When I got home, I saw that she'd sent me a friend request. Really inappropriate and weird. Doomsday adds, A similar thing happened to me when I was switching service providers for my phone. My family and I went over to Verizon's office to sign our contract and pick up our new phones. And this process, well, it took about two hours. I like to talk to the associates to keep the two hours from being boring. After we left with our phones, the associates that helped us called up to try and ask me out. I said no and blocked her number. My parents had to go pick up our tablet later that week and wanted me to go since I managed the contract portion and was the most knowledgeable about the plan, but I refused. They even encouraged me to take interest in her, which really killed me. They do not know about the phone call. I can only imagine the uproar if it was a guy calling my sister. Nifty Ifty adds, Well, you would have to report the employee in order to sue, so yeah, sue, get, gotta get that money. Only way a business will make changes. Remember, whatever work culture existed in that place that allowed for this to happen, it may be the individual employee did that, but this company put them in a position to be able to and apparently didn't do anything to prevent it. For instance, my company deals with personal records also. Every employee signs documentation and receives training about customer privacy and the consequences of intentional actions to circumvent these policies. 
If it happens and I get sued, you better believe I'm going to tighten those restrictions even more. But otherwise, I will assume what I'm doing is working well enough to not get sued. This is really taking this out of context. I mean, the person just knew the, the dude's name. Like, I mean, it, if they can find you by looking, just Googling or searching your name... Like, it's not like they have your, your address or some, like, social security number, important information. Like, it, this seems like overreacting to me. Because, like, yeah, guys and girls can be very creepy to strangers they're attracted to. And we like to make people seem as if they're crazy, crazy, creepy stalker people. But a lot of us who bitch and moan about this in, in their shoes... <coughs> in their circumstance, we actually end up doing something very similar. So I'm not, I'm not saying it's okay to abuse somebody in any way. That's not what I'm suggesting. I'm just saying that we shouldn't be so quick to judge somebody for just trying to get a connection or a friendship. Like we shouldn't bitch at people for just like sending a friend request. Like even if they found out through something, I mean, I, Okay, what? So it's not okay for your nurse to do that to you, but if, like, the sexy barista at the coffee shop does that, it's fine? Like, I don't know. I mean, like, where's the line? I, from my perspective, if they're literally just, like, what's the worst case scenario? They get your your number, and they contact you, and you don't feel comfortable, and you ignore them? What? And then they... they become a stalker and kill you is that what you think's gonna happen i mean it's a bit sad isn't it like really is it that big of a deal that somebody might text you you could fucking ignore the text like you know it's like i i, I understand more when people are complaining and and venting about things people have done to them or when people ignored them when they said they weren't interested those that is abuse that is harassment just somebody hitting on you just because they're in a professional job uh, i mean it's humans do that it's it's going to happen like you can like to believe that every person who has a job takes the job more seriously than their interest for love and that they're going to ignore an opportunity to make a connection with a person who they may fall in love with. Uh, I mean, okay, yeah, you can live in that idealistic world all you want. The point here is that just somebody trying to get in touch with you, I mean, I understand if you feel uncomfortable because they know your name because they were your nurse and they searched for your name on Facebook because what, they thought you were hot or something. I mean, that's probably literally what happened. Is that really that bad? It's one thing if they like searched for you, messaged you every single day, you said you don't want anything and then they keep asking you. That's when it's abuse. That's when it's harassment. If somebody's literally just attracted to you and tried to get your number or contact you, I mean, really? You, is that that bad? I, I don't think it is. I really don't. Moving on. Miss Shaps Dry Vag adds, same. The drunker people got, the more they would insist on checking. I told a woman in no uncertain terms that if she tried again, she'd get a knee to the face. She said, oh, come on, and then went to crouch down and lift up my kilt. I didn't knee her to the face, but I did shove her to the ground. Her husband, who was there the entire time, then wanted to fight me. Every other groomsman held my back, thankfully, but it seems most people at the party thought I was the one out of line. The venue even cut me off but kept serving the drunk trying to see my dick. It still angers me to this day. Like, that is harassment. That is actual harassment. See, a person not listening to saying no, being ridiculous, that's harassment. Totally true. And it is true that, like, drunk old ladies can be, like, the, the stereotypical way you think a guy, <laughs> a guy is. I guess some of those ladies can get real horny. Omar's Droog adds, I was in the military. 
One day we had had a fundraiser where anyone who paid like five bucks could wear what they wanted to formation. We were released to a long weekend directly from formation. Some people wore their civvy clothes, some people wore Hawaiian shirts, even a few people in bathrobes and bunny slippers. I chose to wear a kilt. I was in the furthest back line of the formation, standing at ease when I felt two hands running up my leg, starting at my calf to just above my knee. I instinctively slapped at the hands before looking to see that it was our chaplain who holds an officer's rank. Then I said, sorry, sir, as if it was my fault. He laughed and said something about it being just a joke. Ugh. Sounds sketchy. Doesn't sound too horrible, though. Pontenia9 adds, I wasn't sure I would post my initial thought on the topic. However, your story is relatable. This was over 20 years ago. My housemates and I were getting ready to go to a Halloween party. I talked one of the male housemates into wearing a dress of mine. It was this cute, velvet little number. Anyhow, fast forward to the party. My friend and I are standing together when this pirate chick walks up and dramatically spreads her arms wide in this wait, hold on gesture. She then takes the tip of her sword and lifts the bottom of the skirt, exposing my friend in front of a huge crowd of people. It's one of those you had to be there moments, but I could clearly see the discomfort on my friend's face. Oof, yikes. <laughs> it is embarrassing when you accidentally show your penis to a bunch of people, let alone when someone else shows your penis to a bunch of people. But at least in that situation, like, I mean, it's embarrassing for you, but someone else fucked you over. It's not your fault, right? Whereas if you fuck up and you accidentally show your penis, then people are like, oh, maybe you wanted to show your penis. You were doing that on purpose. I can share a story. Haunts me to this day. Once I lived with somebody. He was my landlord. And he did not have very much social experience. And... I was sleeping in the living room in this little bed that we had in the living room for naps. And it was right next to the air conditioning unit. It was so cool. You could feel the breeze on your face. And I was wearing pajama pants. And I hadn't noticed that when I stood up, my penis had slipped out of the hole in the pajama pants. I had no idea, okay? And then... I was just going to the bathroom, so I just kept walking to the bathroom like I was, you know, walking to the bathroom, except my penis was out, and I didn't know that because I had just woken up, and I was all groggy and tired. And then my landlord friend person at the time saw this, and we had this awkward moment where we made eye contact, and I was like, why the fuck is he looking at me all funny? And then he looked down, and I was like, oh, shit. And then I realized, right? And I put it away. But to this day, that person thinks that I was trying to, like, dominate him by showing him my penis, which I've had three separate conversations with the individual, and he never believed me, and it really irked me. I'm like, why would somebody purpose, what, what? So I kind of wish someone else had done it to me, so that this person couldn't be like, oh, yeah, you did that on purpose. Because, I mean, what, I purposely got another person to? Okay, whatever. Anyway, this hit a real nerve. Let's see what Taco TJ601 says. This happened to me, too, in my first job out of college. It was a home health company that was 97% woman. I had to cover for the receptionist during her lunch break and would have to deal with the nurses calling in all the time. I would get comments as soon as I answered the phone. They have a man answering the phone now. Or, this is home health, right? Where's Linda? Also had several complaints, too. I had my manager ask me to not use such a low and intimidating voice and to try and sound more happy. This was an HR position, and I was given the equivalent of perk up, buttercup. <laughs> Corvum Correspond adds, my boss, when I was working at a casino, said that my voice was too intimidating. So I have to have a people voice, because my height and voice made people afraid to approach me. I'm only 6'2", while my boss was 6'7", and black, with a deeper voice. I pointed that out, and he said, it's not my job to carouse with the guests. They want to talk to the captain, not the director. You're the captain. 
then you need to be approachable. I did that for four years because the pay was great. I still do it, but I catch myself and look like a weirdo whose voice changes pitches. It's a funny story, as my mother knew, but when I visited her and her friends, I automatically went into people voice mode. Then one day, her friend caught me talking normal and asked if I was sick. My mother just started laughing. Years of them not knowing. Eh, what is talking normal anyway? We all start to talk like the people we're around. It's kind of crazy. I could imagine how if you get used to talking a certain way at work, eventually it becomes the way you talk, right? Wrongly, Zoro adds, I've received feedback that my communication style is off-putting because I ask questions like this in our company chat program. Hey, would you be able to take a look at this instead of this? Hey, I know this is super random. Can you take a look at this for me, please? I'm an engineer in my 30s. I don't like when people talk to me like I'm a puppy. I learned that day that some people prefer being talked to like they're puppies. Shit blows my mind. I now cram so many emojis, extra letters, and extra punctuation into messages that when I interact with this person, it has to make them feel uncomfortable. Hooray! Lunatic8 adds, I worked as a security officer for events as a side thing a few years ago. I was like 20, maybe. I was working at a Luke Bayan concert and was walks, walking up a set of stairs. Suddenly, I feel a hand squeezing the gut of my right ass cheek. I turn around and it was an older lady. I'm talking mid-50s. I tell her that that's not okay and she suggested I know I liked it and that if I didn't want someone to squeeze my ass, it shouldn't look so tasty. Like, just because I'm a guy, I like it? Side note, apparently this was a problem at this guy's concerts where a woman would show up to meet and greets and stuff and just grope his ass. This lady showing up wanting to grope some ass and sure enough, she found one. The real Travis Clois says, I was at the bar and a girl came up behind me and grabbed my butt and said, Hey hot stuff, what are you doing over here? I turned around to answer her because I thought it might be one of my coworkers fucking around, but the look of horror on her face said it all. I wasn't who she thought I was. She apologized a million times, and it turns out I was wearing something extremely similar to her boyfriend. Khakis, a blue Oxford, and a black puffy vest. She brought him over, and from behind, I could get the mistake. We have a similar build, height, and hair color, and our clothing was the same. He was a cool dude. I ran into them a few more times at the bar. <laughs> That's pretty funny. <laughs> That's the most sincere, funniest story on this so far. I guess uh, what kind of low-grade sexual har harassment do you experience regularly isn't exactly a question to promote funny responses, is it? Terrible Start adds, I'm honestly baffled by reading all the shit here. I know that male sexual harassment and abuse exists, but I didn't really know that it was this pervasive. I've been sexually harassed by two people, another student and a boss at summer job, repeatedly inappropriately touched by a coach for a sport I do, and most recently was cat cold while walking home from dinner a couple days ago. Just for reference, I'm not even 21 yet. All these experiences were traumatic. They made me feel absolutely disgusting. They made me feel vulnerable. They made me feel embarrassed. And they made me feel like I was in danger. I can't imagine being a woman and doing the same thing to a man while thinking that you're in the clear for your actions. Like, the fuck? And then on top of that, it seems like when guys report it, they're not taken seriously. I mean, to be fair, I have yet to be taken seriously by anyone other than my own parents and my therapist. But still, this is being mental. Even if I hadn't had numerous experiences with unwanted sexual attention, every woman knows another woman. Every woman has heard stories. Every woman gets nervous. You don't need to be a victim to know how much it sucks to be harassed or assaulted. How are there so many women that are oblivious to the fact that men are humans too? Treat others the way you want to be treated. We all learn that in preschool. You know what I'm fed up with with people? I'm fed up with how much we're like, oh, women do this, guys do that. Women suck, guys suck. Men are bigots, women are big. It's like, we're all fucking human, guys. Seriously. There's abusive females and there's abusive males. When you talk about abuse, 
You shouldn't be being like, how could women not realize what they're doing? It's like, look, some women are shit people. Some men are shit people. The question is, how can people not realize what they're doing? Because it doesn't matter if she's a woman. Because I know women who've been abused. I know men who've been abused. And guess what? If you're alive, you know somebody who's been abused. Whether they're a male or a female is actually quite irrelevant. But we focus entirely too much on men are this, women are that. No, they're human. There's plenty of human who are men but are girly. I'm a girly guy. And there's plenty of girls who are like guys and get mistaken for guys and they hate it because again we always focus way too much on gender <sighs> but hey i'm i'm reading comments online so you know people are judgmental people are shitty people are abusive and people low grade sexually harass each other on the regular regardless of being a male or a female you shouldn't be surprised by that Seriously. All right, everybody. That's it for now. If you like this kind of content, please do one of the four following. Watch another one of our videos, comment on this video, like this video, or subscribe to our channel. And if you want to get involved with some YouTuber tools, we have a reading tool that takes the best comments out of a Reddit thread. So if you like reading Reddit and you're getting tired of reading all those one sentence lame ass responses, you don't have to anymore. You can just use a tool and skip all that shit and get right to the good, juicy comments. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Ciao.